David, let me ask you a couple of things they're asking me. Josh says, ask him about the case of uh, Dennis Martin in the Smoky Mountains and what he was told by Dennis's father about the FBI agent on the case. That resonate? Oh yeah, this this is a lengthy story. Uh, we have time. Hadn't hadn't planned on talking about it, but I'll be glad to. Okay. Dennis was a, a six-year-old boy, and he and his dad, his grandpa, and his brother went up to a location in Great Smoky Mountains National Park called Spence Field. It was Father's Day in the early 60s, and they were camping out, and during the day, the kids and the grandpa and the dad were playing and having fun. The uh, They were sitting at a corner of the park up near the edge of the forest in this big field, and they were running around and this other family comes up to him and asks Mr. Martin if the kids could play together. Sure. And he said, Ab- absolutely, this is great. And the other man leans down and introduces himself and his, his last name was Martin as well, which is quite a coincidence. It is. And the kids start playing together and they decide they're going to play hide and seek. And, you know, one guy's looking and all the kids run off and hide and Mr. Martin said that he watched his son, Dennis, go behind a tree right at the edge of the meadow. And after everybody said, come out, Dennis didn't come out. And Mr. Martin said he got up, never took his eyes off the tree, walked towards it. His son wasn't there. Well, right next to this tree was the Appalachian Trail. He said that he ran nonstop for two miles down that trail and never found his son, came back, told his dad to go down the hill, get park rangers, and that started one of the biggest searches in that part of the country ever. And it also, that afternoon, it started to rain, and it rained there nonstop for a week and a half. So during the search efforts, the FBI sent an agent to the park to quote-unquote monitor the case. Mm -hmm. And he teamed up with another park ranger that monitored the case. Now, at that time, after a couple days... Uh, the Green Berets show up via helicopter into the park. They land, they get out, and they set up a base with their own communications. The park rangers come over and say, hey, we could team up together, we could work since we know the park, blah, blah, blah. They said, nope, we work alone. And contrary to what you will hear out there by some people, there was never anything definitive about who called the Green Berets in because I have a report that's about four inches thick, and I've gone through it six times, and nobody wants to stake a claim into who called them and why they were there. Two times, I have filed Freedom of Information Act requests with the Department of the Army asking for the orders for that Green Beret team on that date. Two times, Art, I never even got a response. It wasn't a denial. Yeah, did, did somebody have a very close, high placed friend in the military? If, if they did, it's not in any report I ever saw. So the Green Bray were there for about a week. They pull out. Mr. Martin never left the park for six weeks. Understand. Now, as Dennis was disappearing, unbeknownst to anybody at Spence Field, there's a family that's at the bottom of the park that drives in, goes up to a park ranger and says, we want to go to a location where we can see a bear. And the rangers tell him to go to this place called Rowan's Creek. So mom, dad, kids start walking up this pretty rural area, not a real defined trail, up this slow slow canyon. And as they're getting up there, they hear a scream, defined as a deafening scream. Now, the last name of this family is pretty coincidental as well. Their last name was Key, Mm K-E-Y. And this is the key part of the case. As they're walking up this valley, the younger son says, Dad look up there, I see a bear on the side of the hill. The father looks up on the hill and says, no, son, that's not a bear. That looks like a man. And he's hiding behind the trees from us. And the family sees this, and this thing is darting behind the tree. You can't see him very well, and eventually takes off. Well, the family goes home, doesn't know a kid's missing. Next day in the Knoxville Times, front page story about a boy disappeared on Spence Field at the exact well, you know, maybe 45 minutes before these guys sure. walked up this valley. So Mr. Key calls the park service and says, I think I may have something for you. And 
I will come to the park and show you the location where I saw it, and we can see if it makes any sense. Well, the supervising detective for the park service at that time calls him back and says, no, don't come to the park. Hmm. We'll come and we'll meet you halfway. Hmm. So the, Mr. Key meets him. Now, this is unusual because when you're a cop, you want to see what the people saw where they saw it. You bet. So this makes no sense. And they met, and that was the end of it. Well, a Knoxville Times reporter happened to hear about this meeting and hear about the observation from the Key family from a family member, not even a source related to the park. And he goes over to Mr. Martin and asks him if he's heard about this. Mr. Martin goes, no, no one's ever told me about this. He goes over to the uh, search and rescue people and goes, do you know about this? And and they go, yeah. But it's not relative to you. Don't worry about it. He goes, no, you promised me everything I would be told. And they go, yeah, but it's impossible. It, the timelines don't make sense. Well, Dwight McCarter, who's still alive, was the chief tracker for the Park Service. And Mr. Martin went to him and told him, this is the time, this is the place, could it be? And McCarter said, yeah, it's possible. And he goes, why don't you and me make that hike tomorrow and see how fast we can make it? All right. The next day, Mr. Martin and McCarter make that hike in plenty of time. And Mr. Mr. Martin knew then that the Park Service was holding something from him and wasn't telling him the whole story this during the entire search effort. Make a longer story very short here. At the end of six weeks, eventually everybody pulls out. They don't find anything. Contrary to what you may read somewhere, there was never any evidence Dennis was anywhere. They essentially found nothing to prove he was anywhere in the area they were searching. So about three years ago, I went to Knoxville uh, with another investigator, and we went right to Mr. Martin's front door, and we knocked on the door. He's living in the same house he was when his son disappeared. He comes to the front door, and I said, Mr. Martin, you're looking at the guy probably who knows more about your son's case than anybody but you. I came all the way from California. I just want to talk to you for a few minutes. And he said, Dave, my wife and I, I have promised never to talk about this again. It's ruined our lives. And, and I, I said, I've, I've come all this way. Just give me 15 minutes. He goes, you got it. He steps out onto the porch, and we had a very enlightening conversation, one that brought tears to my eyes. I knew this man had been lied to incessantly by the Park Service. All right. Here's David Bleeds. And uh, he, David, you were uh, on the porch with this man who finally granted you, uh, what, 15 minutes to talk about this case. Uh, what do you say? So uh, there's two of us talking to Mr. Martin, and uh, he said, Dave, you know, you've read the reports. You know that they lied to me, and they continue to lie to me today. And uh, he said that uh, that timeline about what the key family saw and my son's disappearance, he goes, it worked because I walked it with McCarter. And uh, he said it was obvious that the FBI and the National Park Service didn't want me to know about the key family, and that's why they kept it away from me. And uh, I, I did later interview McCarter about all this and he substantiated everything Mr. Martin said and one thing I always ask people when I'm interviewing them is I say so is there anything about this event that I didn't talk to you about that I should really know about right and I said I said and he looks at me he goes absolutely there is he goes you wrote about a series of disappearances in the park and around the park at that time frame I said yes and he says, and you wrote that an FBI agent monitored all of those cases. Mm-hmm. I said, that's correct. His name was Jim Reich. And he goes, do you know what ever happened to Mr. Reich or Agent Reich? I said, no. He said he committed suicide. Oh. And we confirmed that a month later by talking to another agent that worked with him. And the only thing he, could, he would confirm is that Reich did commit suicide. Um, tell me about the lies. I mean, yes, there were lies told. What were they? So for starters, they never told Mr. Martin about the Key family. Okay. When he found out about the Key family, they said that the timeline between the disappearance and what they saw didn't fit. Uh, he asked about why the Green Braves were there. Mm-hmm. They didn't tell him. Uh, they, he asked about what Agent Reich knew about other cases. They wouldn't tell him. He asked him if there was any evidence that his son was abducted. 
They said no. Well, when he finally got a chance to meet the Key family and ask them about what they saw, the family said, well, we saw this look like a person up on the side of that mountain, Mm -hmm. dodging between trees, and it had something on its shoulder. Oh, my God. You're describing every parent's absolute nightmare. You're, you're and Arne, to... I want you to think. Of, I want you to think about this. Yeah. Mr. Martin is in a position where he has to trust the one organization that's going to help him and bring him back. Of course, yes, back. of course. Can you imagine living with this for a lifetime and knowing that they've lied to you, they've hidden the truth, and they won't help you? And there's no explanation for the suicide. Um, at all, other than no. what we can imagine from knowing about the case. That's all I know. <sighs> um, in how many cases that you've investigated, uh, David, has a medical examiner actually been able to come up with a cause of death? Well, there's there's been a, more than a few, and usually it comes out to being hypothermia Mm -hmm. I would think uh, perhaps stroke and uh, heart attacks that kind of thing as well people not used to the exertion actually I've never seen a stroke really as a determination and uh, there may be a heart attack but I honestly don't remember one (laughs) Um, the creature or the being that you described or, or was described to you I guess is more accurate um, you know, a lot of people are going to think that's Bigfoot. And that's that's the place where a lot of people like to go. And you got to understand that not only did I talk to Mr. Martin, but then I went back and we interviewed McCarter twice, the uh-huh. head tracker for the Park Service. Right. And I said, hey, is all of this true, what Mr. Martin said? He looked me in the eye and looked the other guy in the eye and he says, it's all true. I said, then what was it that Mr. or that the Key family saw on the side of that mountain? And he said, a couple months before Dennis disappeared, Mm -hmm. there was a park ranger that stopped somebody in the park, and they got in a fight, and the park ranger was beaten pretty bad. And this was before the park rangers carried guns, even before law enforcement guys in the parks carried guns. And he says, Dave, there was a group of people at the time, and he goes, there probably still is, that live off the grid that wear furs over their shoulders, Mm. that live in the park, that we can't control, and they do petty crimes. And he goes, this is what probably took Dennis, but nobody wants to admit it. No, it's not a petty crime. Or even close. That isn't for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What about signs of foul play? I mean, at these various sites where these people disappeared, obviously when law enforcement of whatever sort goes in, they're going to look for any signs of foul play at all. Not just sense. Sometimes dogs can do it. Sometimes the dogs can't do it. More times than not, they can. But, I mean, uh, they're going to look for other signs of foul play, right? Absolutely. Nothing? Nothing. 